So now we're going to talk to talk about broken abstractions in software security. So it's it's common to to cover in usability courses how users uh, use abstractions or mental models of uh, systems to reason about how they work. Uh, the same is true for uh, developers when they are using APIs and using uh, technical systems when they are writing uh, programs that are using these. So we are going to talk briefly about this problem and show some examples of, for instance, uh, file system paths, character encoding, integer overflows, and the, the general problem of uh, data and code being uh, uh, interchanged accidentally. So let's start with file system paths. So we have this uh, short Python program here where uh, in the main function where we start execution here, we just want to open a file provided uh, by the, the user. So the user provides the file name here. And we open this with a specific open function that um, we will get back to. And what we do is simply print the contents of this file and then we're done. Now the open function here is a jailed version. So we want to lock the user into a particular directory and the user shouldn't be able to uh, select a file outside of that. So in this case, we implement it very simply by using the, the Python open call and we prepend a path and a slash and then the, the user's file name. So this should uh, keep the user in, in this path. And the path that we select is the user's home folder. Now, what happens if we execute this one? So, of course, we have a malicious user who executes this uh, program, jl.py, uh, with a file name dot dot slash dot dot slash etc. password. And as we can see in the output here of the, the program, the program opened the, the local password file and printed the, the contents in there. Now, why does this happen? Well, we had set the jail path to be the environment, the home, uh, home, home directory, uh, which we get from, from the environment. And this one uh, was in this case, uh, slash home, uh, slash uh, debosk. Now, the file name that the user provided was dot dot slash dot dot slash etc slash password, and thus the concatenation uh, that we got resulted in uh, this file path. Now the purpose of the dot dot here is, is to specify relative file names. So in this case, uh, this dot dot goes back to the parent directory. So it cancels that part, whereas this dot dot cancels this part. So the path that we actually opened was etc. password uh, from the root folder and not uh, inside the uh, jailed uh, directory that we had in mind. Another uh, an, an, an approach to, to try to stop this is, okay, fine, we ban the string uh, dot dot slash and uh, hope that uh, this will work because then technically the, the user shouldn't be able to use the same malicious trick. But then what about uh, this string? Uh, so in uh, this case, uh, the small and the, the short encoding here is uh, an encoding for uh, the slash character. Uh, so depending on when we do the check, uh, we might catch this slash or we might not. So it depends on, on where uh, this encoding is decoded into, into the slash. So if we do the check before the decoding, then we will miss it. And if we, but if we do it after, uh, it will work. So this brings us into the next, the other problem, uh, encodings. Now all characters in a computer system uh, are, must be represented in, in some form. 
and this is called uh, character encoding. So because uh, these are just binary strings and they should uh, map to, to characters or they, they can be interpreted as, as numbers. Uh, so one common encoding is UTF-8. We will uh, see how that one works uh, shortly. Uh, but the thing is, so you, you use some encoder, so you, you take uh, binary strings and you map them to characters which are readable by humans. And then uh, you have uh, decoders which take these binary strings and uh, uh, map back to, to the representation. So the encode, en encoder basically take the, takes the character that the user had in mind, represents it as a binary string, sends it away, and the decoder takes the binary string and maps it back to some character that's in, readable by, by a human. And uh, decoders and encoders might be programmed differently. And some decoders might either take errors in different encoders uh, into consideration to compensate, to avoid problems uh, in the cases that this actually works, or they might actually uh, be implemented in a more general way than what is intended, and this can lead to problems. So we will, uh, we will see this. Uh, in a moment. Uh, also, where the encoding and decoding happens can also be exploited. So, for instance, if we compare uh, strings of bytes or if we compare strings of characters, uh, that's a completely different thing because uh, we can compare byte by byte. That usually works if you're just using uh, standard ASCII, so only uh, US English uh, letters. But uh, it doesn't work if you use, like, for instance, uh, some accented uh, letters from French or some of the German derivative uh, letters that are available in, in languages such as uh, Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish, and German, of course. Now, the UTF-8 uh, character encoding is a standard that has been around for quite some time. Uh, so it uses uh, variable length code words. Uh, that's uh, part of its strength. Uh, and uh, it, the way it does this is by having letting the first bit indicate if the next byte is also part of the same code word. So uh, in this case, we can have several bytes represent one character, and this is necessary uh, to be able to represent uh, a lot of uh, characters. So, for instance, if we have a one byte uh, version, then the first bit is zero, and then we have seven bits available uh, to, to uh, encode uh, characters. So this is the standard US ASCII. So it's been designed this way to be uh, com backwards compatible with uh, US ASCII uh, files, so those uh, are uh, the same in UTF-8 uh, format. Now, if this is, uh, if, if uh, one byte if, or seven bits is not sufficient, we need to uh, add more characters. For instance, if you want to add the characters from the Swedish language or Chinese and um, or other alphabets like that, then we need to, to get more uh, bytes. So if we need two bytes, uh, then we have, uh, then we start it by uh, two ones followed by a zero, and then the next byte is one zero, and then uh, we use the bits. So in this case, we, we get uh, 11 bits in total uh, to represent uh, characters. Now, uh, and yeah, it's the same uh, same way to, to extend to three bytes and then four bytes. And uh, then these uh, bit strings uh, map to uh, different uh, characters. Uh, so in the in the four four byte version here, we can use uh, we have 20, 21 bits available uh, at our disposal. So we we can represent quite a lot of characters in UTF-8. 
Now, one of the problems uh, that uh, has occurred in the past with UTF-8 is that uh, you could specify uh, one uh, character in, in, in several ways. So for instance, say that we, we put uh, all zeros here and the last bit to, to one. So all these are zero and then the last bit is one. Now, obviously, if we take this uh, four byte version and we set all these bits to zero, all these bits to zero, all these bits to zero, and this uh, final bit to, to one, so all these bits are zero. Uh, then obviously we get the, the same number. Uh, it's the, the last bit is one, so it's uh, both are, are one. So it's one way of uh, representing the same character in two different ways. Now, uh, this uh, did lead to problems uh, in the past. And uh, actually the, the standard, so the encoding standard, UTF-8, says that is only the, the shortest representation that's valid. Uh, so this uh, long version would not be a valid uh, encoding. So it should be discarded. However, uh, there has been uh, decoders of UTF-8 uh, whose implementations didn't consider that uh, this as uh, a faulty encoding and uh, discarded it. So it actually allowed for this. So no problems uh, occur from that. I mean, you, you don't get any character mismatches or anything like that. So everything looks normal. So it's uh, fine from a uh, from a uh, reliance perspective, but from a security perspective, it's not fine because the way uh, this was used was that uh, a character which could be represented like this uh, might be part of one of those uh, strings we want to ban. And then the adversary could simply uh, encode that character like this instead and get away with it so it would pass uh, that filter although it shouldn't uh, so that's how it was exploited uh, in 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 computer systems uh, of the past so particularly if i remember correctly it was used in uh, web servers to uh, access uh, paths that that weren't supposed to be accessible Now, another problem is integer overflows. Now, uh, when uh, we think about the integers, we think about this uh, infinitely long line of integers, starting at minus infinity and ending at uh, plus infinity. Now, in computer systems, uh, they don't really work like that, integers. They, they are uh, uh, modulus. So instead of, so if we draw here the, the number line starting at minus infinity going to uh, plus infinity here and zero somewhere here in the middle, uh, the computer system, although it, it has quite some range, uh, it's uh, finite and it uh, rotates. So actually a better uh, picture of this one would be uh, to have zero here and it attaching uh, like this. So, so it's uh, cir circular uh, due to the, the modulus uh, of how things work. So, so here we have, for instance, uh, two to the power of uh, 64 minus one. And uh, here we have two to the power of 64 minus one, so a minus on that side. Um, still quite some range, but uh, it's still uh, finite. Now, if we consider this program here that we that we have, uh, people tend to to think about the number line like this, and this can cause some problems. So the, this simple program wants to combine two strings. So we have some buffer here with uh, 128 bytes of storage. 
So remember here, it's uh, bytes and not actual characters. So we this uh, this can take uh, strings of various length depending on how they are encoded. Uh, but for now, we, we don't try to interpret these strings, so, so that's not a problem. Uh, but we have this string s1, and uh, it has length len1, and the string s2 of length len2. And we simply add these two strings together, plus the terminating null character that uh, is a must in uh, C and C++. And as long as that fits in the buffer space that we have, so in within these 128 bytes that we that we have then we copy the first string to the buffer and its maximum this length and then we concatenate uh, what's already in the buffer by uh, s2 here and maximum length len2 now what could go wrong here uh, so the code looks uh, perfectly fine so if we uh, have uh, len2 here, which is very long. So say that this is a 32-bit uh, system that we're working on, uh, and that those uh, size sizes are 32-bit integers, then uh, say that len2 is 2 to the power 32 minus 1, so the maximum uh, number it can, can take. Uh, now, the calculation we had there was len1 plus len2 plus 1, uh, in the in the check that we had, but since this is in a computer system, uh, we have mod th uh, two to the power of thirty-two, uh, and uh, if we uh, look at what this uh, yields, we see that len one we haven't said anything about it, but uh, so that one will remain. But we can say something about len two here because that was two to the power of thirty-two minus one. Uh, and then we have plus one here. So two to the power of 32 here, uh, modulo two to the power of 32, that's zero. Uh, minus one and plus one, those of course cancel. So this expression uh, evaluates to len one, uh, which might actually fit in the buffer. So what will happen here is that we will overwrite the buffer because uh, len two was actually much larger, much too large. So this check shouldn't pass, but due to this integer overflow, uh, we only get len one as a result, uh, which seems to fit. So the test passes, and but we overwrite the buffer anyway because uh, of this uh, mismatch. Uh, so this is uh, the problem of integer overflows. Of course, uh, it gets uh, worse if we use signed integers instead of unsigned. So where we have uh, the negatives too. Uh, and that might be uh, use useful to the, to the adversary. Now, the final part you know, that we're going to talk about is uh, data and code and when they are mistaken for each other. So we consider this uh, short, uh, script echo.sedge which takes a parameter uh, so it uh, simply uses the, the normal echo program but uh, it wants to have this particular option to the echo program enabled and uh, then it takes any argument uh, and uh, simply passes it on to the echo uh, utility to, to print it and in this case in this example the the argument that we put is this text string here. But if we look at the output, uh, the output uh, doesn't really resemble this one perfectly. So this E here is missing, otherwise it's identical. Now this uh, E option here, uh, it's uh, supposed to make echo uh, interpret uh, sequences like this, so these escape sequences, so backslash n, as a new line character and actually break the line. Uh, but this wasn't the case here. Uh, and the reason that e here has disappeared is because this is interpreted as another argument to echo here. And the capital E cancels the lowercase e. So uh, here we actually turn this feature off. That's why we print backslash n here instead of uh, making a new line. 
But if we change the script, and the only change we do is to add these uh, quotation marks here, uh, then we see that the output is actually uh, what is expected. So the E here is actually printed and we get a new line here. And the reason is that now the shell here that executes this, it doesn't pass, uh, it doesn't allow echo to interpret this E as an argument, but it actually interprets uh, this as the, the text string to, to print. Uh, so here uh, we didn't mistake this uh, part of the input, so part of the data, as part of the code as we did on the previous page where this was interpreted as an argument to, to echo. Uh, so that's the, that's the difference here. Yeah. So it's very easy to make these mistakes in, in many, many languages, and we'll see a few more now. So this particular problem, uh, so this is an example that was actually uh, a problem in the, in the wild. So many years ago in Linux and AIX systems, uh, we had the login utility and particularly the R login utility, which uh, is for remote logins. Uh, they had this uh, problem, uh, quite exactly this problem. So the login utility, uh, it uh, takes some arguments uh, to, and it logs a user in to, to the system. Now, uh, the interesting option here is, is here where we specify the username and this option F, which uh, forces a login. So uh, you log in as that user without uh, having to supply a password. Now, uh, our login here uh, is for using uh, remote logins. So you, you specify a remote machine where you want to log in. And uh, the way uh, this works is that our login connects to that machine and then starts executing the, the login uh, program. So the login program starts executing on that uh, machine and it uh, uses the username that was supplied here. And there was this bug that uh, you could specify a username of dash f root like this. Our login would accept it and it would pass it on to login and login would actually interpret uh, the f here as this uh, optional uh, option here, which would mean that you, if you just uh, selected this username, uh, you would get uh, logged into the system without having to enter a password, and you would be logged in as root, which is the uh, administrator account, so the super user account on a, a Unix system. So you would get all the powers of the, the system uh, without having to enter the password. So uh, really bad, uh, really bad bug. Now another example of uh, where these things can uh, turn nasty is another example from the shell where, uh, consider, where we consider this script that simply uh, prints uh, a uh, the contents of a file. So the file name is specified here in the first parameter uh, and uh, it, it's printed and, and sent to the mail program. And uh, the second argument here is supposed to be a, an email address. Now, if you supply uh, the email address uh, like this, and then you add another one of this and uh, uh, you, you simply remove all files on the system. Uh, this would work and this would have undesir undesirable uh, consequences. So another example is when you interact with databases. So for instance, uh, when you write uh, something along the lines of the following in a web application, you want to fetch a line from the database. So you have a line of SQL uh, where you have a variable. So you want to fetch uh, the the row in a ta in the table uh, client so you want to fetch uh, the row of some client with a name and then specified in this variable 
So this is how you write the code. And then you put the name in here and then you send the result to uh, the database and the database will process this. Now, what happens uh, if uh, Eve is allowed to specify her name and she specifies her name as Eve and then this apostrophe or uh, one equals one. Now, this will get a totally different meaning because the text string that the database will receive will look exactly like this. And uh, we see that the, the first parts here up until Eve is exactly the same. And then instead of the variable name here, uh, it actually says the contents of the variable. Now, the SQL database uh, that's running and gets this string, it has no idea of determining which part here is uh, from the variable and on what the uh, what the string would actually, uh, which part of the string is from the code and which is from uh, user input. So it can't tell if the programmer actually intended to have this uh, part of the code here or not. Yeah, so it will execute this. And of course, uh, so we check either the name is equals to Eve or one is equal to one, which is true for every row in the, in the database. So in this case, Eve can make the database return uh, the information about any client in the database. Yeah, so she, she can read out the entire database if she likes, which is uh, not intended, I, I'd say. In most cases, it, it would not be intended. So let's uh, end this uh, part with uh, uh, some humor. So XKCD, of course, uh, made a pun on this uh, SQL injection problem, which was the last example we saw. Uh, so you can, of course, uh, put in some, some more uh, nasty code in this case, uh, the uh, the mom here has uh, written her uh, son's name in a funny funny way in the form. So she uh, she named uh, named her son Robert and then uh, ended the string here and then added drop table students. So which means that the uh, the table students is uh, removed from the database and uh, removed everything uh, that was there. So those are some more nasty things that can, can happen if you don't uh, protect against things like this. Now that was everything for uh, this time. Uh, thanks a lot.